everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I am very excited to say that it is the two year anniversary for this channel. I have been asked a lot lately what kind of got me started in creating YouTube content and I'm going to save that for our Q&A video that I still owe you. But today I thought we would go ahead and celebrate with something a little bit different, a sketchbook tour. Now a lot of you guys have been asking me to do this as well and I haven't done one on the channel because I've never really finished off an entire sketchbook before. There are probably some of you out there like me that start a sketchbook and don't finish it or tear out half the pages from a sketchbook and never get around to finishing it and so I am very excited on a personal level to have completed this and I thought that today would be a great day to share it with you. So I started this sketchbook in June of 2017. It is now August of 2018, so it took a little bit over a year for me to finish this off. So this sketchbook started off with a trip to my local zoo, the one that I used to work at. I was going with my boyfriend and his mother. We stopped by the meerkat exhibit first, and they are definitely personable little guys. I think that if my memory serves me right, that I did the sketches while I was sitting looking at the meerkats. I took some pictures, and then I finished them up later that night when we went out to dinner. I was kind of sketching while we were waiting for our food to come with the watercolors. I do remember being really impressed at the first sight of this because I scrubbed and re-scrubbed and like went over this over and over and over again with my water brush and the paper held up pretty well so I was pretty impressed with it. Oh you guys might want to know what sketchbook I'm using huh? This is the handbook travelogue sketchbook and I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description below for you so you can go ahead and find it if you'd like it. I have enjoyed the overall process of working in it. So then they also have a wetlands exhibit at this zoo, and so there's a little whistling duck and a plover, and uh, then they also had a jaguar exhibit. The jaguar, I'm pretty sure I did the next day. I don't think that was at the zoo itself, but again, I took a reference photo and uh, looked back on it. These two sketches were done in the aviary. They have a walkthrough aviary, and I got a chance to do those kind of while I was there, which was really fun and a bit different for me. This next spread is uh, showing some love to some reptiles, and I think these two are my absolute favorite little crocodilians I have worked on ever. This is a gouache piece that I love so much. I did it on a scrap piece of paper. I think this is like like regular printer paper. It's not even nice paper, uh, or maybe not printer paper, but like sketchbook paper. And I liked it so much that I cut it out and taped it into the spread and went ahead and did the other reptiles around it. And then this little guy here, He's so cute and like sneaky looking. Uh, he was done later than the other guys on this page, but it was still a lot of fun. These next two pages were done really recently. The pages underneath these two were ones that I really didn't like. And so when I got some new gouache samples and some new gouache, uh, this is a brand new a uh, little intake that I had. I wanted to go ahead and swatch them out and then I just needed to de-stress. I've been really stressed out lately so I went ahead and just did like this really free flow. I was just mixing colors together. It wasn't intended to be a galaxy but then I was like hey you know what that looks like it could use some little splatters so that's what I did there but mostly just relaxing and swatching. These, by the way, I was able to purchase thanks to your purchases over on Jackson's. So they will get a video in a little bit, but I did get to go ahead and pick up the Schmincke Hordam gouache, which I am super excited about trying out more. This next spread I don't totally love. Um, they were both cover-ups from before, or I guess maybe this page was blank and this was a cover-up. This is some gouache work um, just to cover up. These were the original sketches on the page in watercolor, but I really didn't like them, so I went over them again with the gouache to try and fix them a little bit. I don't know how successful I was. And then these ones are water-soluble graphite. Um, I've used the Derwent ones in the past, and my sister just sent me the Faber-Castell ones to try and compare and contrast, so I was doing just a couple little sketches to try them out there. Let me know if you guys want to see a video on those. And the next page is some figure studies, so just in case you don't want to see that, it's not something I normally show on my channel, so this was just an exercise I did. I was watching um, some figure studies online, and they have, like, videos where you can 
do little studies where they'll flip over every 30 seconds or so or two minutes or whatever the intervals are and so I was practicing that. You guys know I don't paint people very often so just trying to get more familiar with that. This I painted fairly early on with Holbein gouache and I actually like how it turned out. Um, I'm not great at hands when they're in a smaller scale in a painting but it was really fun working on this slightly larger one. This was just to help fill the page up and this one was actually something fun that I did recently with my sister when I was visiting her for her wedding. Um, she wanted to learn how to draw better and to paint so we actually switched paper so I gave her my sketchbook and she drew this rhino as I was kind of instructing her on how to do that and I sketched the rhino that I was teaching her with on another piece of paper and gave that to her. Then we swapped papers back, I painted this one and she painted my line art. So that was a fun little mini collab with my sister who is learning more about watercolor and drawing skills. This page I think I did while I was at a convention. Definitely not some of my most inspired work by any means, but I kind of like the elephant. There's some nice um, like little gesture values in there. Uh, this was also not my greatest work, also at a, an event where I was like outside and dealing with customers and coming and going back and forth into the journal, so they're not super polished pieces. Once again, I had a lot of um, I had a lot of outdoor fairs all back to back last fall, and so that's when all of these were done. I didn't love this spread. I have another spread later that you guys will see uh, with some more wolves on it, and then just some mushrooms. I kind of like this purple one down here. It's pretty fun. So this next spread is probably my favorite overall spread in the whole sketchbook. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I did these three foxes on another sheet of paper and they are with Eve's handmade paints that she sent me. And I love them so much that I wanted them to be in the sketchbook and I wanted to fill out a whole spread around them. So I went ahead and drew and sketched in these other foxes. Then I went ahead and cut these guys out and glued them in so that they would be a complete spread all together. This page only like got finished more recently and you can kind of actually tell uh, between the three different subjects on this piece that they were probably done at different times. This is the first piece that I did. It is a character from a game called Near and Far. Uh, it's a really beautiful board game and there's lizard people in that game and so I had a lot of fun uh, doing that sketch. Then I did the armadillos and these were just really loose sketches. I think these two are probably my favorite. I just love the gesture and the lighting that I was able to get with them. Definitely the gel pen didn't work in this one and then I also did this little portrait down here. And then I wanted to finish off the spread with some other desert type animals so I went ahead and just the other day finally sketched in this little jeroba and uh, well two jerobas I guess. Uh, it's a really unique animal that has has obviously very large ears and they're pretty cute. So this next page I believe is all from when we were in Denver visiting my sister. We went to a coffee house and saw a little dog that was drinking water from a little pop-up cup outside that his owner had. I was playing around with some graphite pencils, the Derwent ones that I mentioned earlier. That was again back in the fall. And we also went to the zoo while we were there, so I think that's what these are from. I got to see African wild dogs for the first time, and if you want to learn more about African wild dogs, I did an AAC piece on them. I'll go ahead and link that up there for you. We've got this rather uninspired looking watercolor sketch of a turtle that looks like a Pokemon, and uh, that's pretty much all there is about that guy. This next pair of paintings are some cover-ups for some whoops pages. I recently did these tutorials for my patrons over on Patreon. This is a gouache version and when that one didn't go quite as I planned I also did a watercolor version as well. I made sure that the paper was the same size that the sketchbook was so that I could go ahead and cover up the paintings that I knew I wanted to go ahead and cover up in here and um, yeah, I think that's it. If you guys want to see the tutorials in real time on these two pieces, they're over on my Patreon. I'll go ahead and link it up there for you. This is a little bit of an interesting spread, although you might recognize this one from my Cuttlefish AAC video. This is when I was trying to play around with the color compositions and the poses that I wanted to do for that AAC piece, and I obviously went with this one. This was from when I was considering doing some more 
Harry Potter fan art that was a little bit more naturalistic. So this was, of course, the lion's face with the red in the background, and I was going to do the other houses and then decided I have enough Harry Potter fan art and I probably wasn't going to invest a ton in doing a lot more of those. This next spread got started when I was doing a tutorial on drawing proportions for my patrons a while back, I think at the beginning of this year, and that's where these two paintings came from. We did the little wolf and the red panda, and you can kind of see some grid lines um, that are underneath those paintings from when I was teaching them how to sketch those things out. And then I went ahead and finished off the spreads more recently with some studies of those animals and I'm just now realizing actually it's kind of funny that the eye study is here and the animal looking this direction is here. That wasn't planned, it just happened to be that way. So it was a lot of fun. I love doing eye studies and you're going to see more of those in just a couple pages I think. This is kind of a mishmash page. This is a very overworked poor Harry Armadillo. Uh, this is supposed to be a little deer that just never came to life. Poor little deer. And these are some practices with some graphite drawings. Um, they're water soluble graphite, but I have some better examples of that later on in a sketchbook. This is when I was at another show. I was just doing some cow studies and then I was also working on some concept sketches for um, my color spotlight video on quinacridone magenta. So this guy you might notice kind of looks like the cockatoo from that video, but I also was playing around the idea with a spoonbill and a flamingo. Both of those I really like the shapes and then I just think this little guy is super, super cute. It's a pink robin, I believe, and they're black with these little pink bellies and I have some more of those I think in two pages to show you. Here is the spread I was mentioning that has some more eye studies and uh, well first off I'll say this is a little sketch that I did when I was making a commission for Miss Otto and um, her version turned out much better. This one looks a little derpy but it was still fun to practice with and I'm glad I definitely did the sketch first before working on her piece because I knew some things that I didn't want to include in the final version. And then the rest of this page are a bunch of eye studies and I did a live stream, actually two of them, over on Instagram where we finished off um, both of these pages so that you guys could kind of see my process with that. I'm thinking about doing a Skillshare class on animal eyes, so let me know in the comments below if that's something that might interest you in the future. And also you can go ahead and pause this video and see if you can guess uh, the different types of eyes here if you, you want a little bit of a guessing game. <laughs> this next page I did in the spring when we were going to Texas, I believe, and these were done actually at night on an airplane. So I kind of impressed myself with that. I don't want to sound like too full of myself, but I think they turned out really well, especially given the circumstances. One of the things I love so much about working in sketchbooks that has been really freeing lately is that I'm not as concerned if they don't turn out super well because it's just a sketchbook. And so I put less pressure on myself and that usually results in a better picture. So I think that's what happened here. It was really fun and um, I especially like this little guy up here. This was another version of the cockatoo that I was playing with but as you guys probably already know I went with this version as kind of the base model for that cockatoo and then added some of the crest feathers from another reference. This next one was also done on the airplane. This once again is the water soluble graphite. So it is a little block and it works like a watercolor pan would except it's not as permanent. It's erasable because it's still graphite and that kind of thing. And once again, I was on the plane, very little pressure, had a reference photo of a zebra, painted this and it's pretty sure it's my single favorite piece in this entire sketchbook. I actually got uh, prints of him made onto my bags recently, my zipper pouches that are in my Etsy shop, and I just uh, I had so much fun with him. These were from my time in Texas. I was eating at a Tex-Mex place and there was a deer head mounted on the wall which I didn't love but it was an animal and I did go ahead and sketch it since I was kind of uh, browsing through downtown by myself the first afternoon I got there and then I drew him a little doe friend and then also in Texas they have grackles there and I think that I've 
I've either talked to you guys about them here or I talked about it on Instagram or something. They're super, super cool words. I'm sure that people who live around them all the time don't always think that. They're very loud, uh, but they just make the coolest noises and I was just kind of enamored with them. This is the female grackle and this is the male. He's looking a little crazy. Don't mind that. I do love the female sketch though quite a bit. Here are some more of those pink robins that I mentioned earlier when I was just trying to sketch out some more ideas for them before I decided against them. That's probably the most work I've ever put into one of the color spotlight pieces in terms of the concept piece because I couldn't decide which bird I wanted to do. Over here I have kind of a cartoonish looking giraffe and that's because I didn't use a reference for this and I was simply just trying to test out this new pimentite. pimentite? I still don't know how to say that word. One of the Daniel Smith Primatech colors um, that a viewer sent me and I just wanted to do a monochromatic painting of an animal that I kind of uh, could sketch up quickly. Obviously the neck isn't as long as it needs to be but it was still fun nonetheless. We're getting pretty close to the end of the sketchbook. Over here we have another graphite drawing. This is of a female kudu that I did the last day we were in Texas. And then over here we have the concept art that I did for the burnt and raw umber color spotlight. So this was the uh, concept piece for the original, uh, eventual final piece that I did, which was also available on some bags. He might be sold out, but I'm gonna be reordering him soon if you're interested. Then this is the last of it. This was the airplane ride back home and I went ahead and tried to do a succulent for the first time and well it didn't go over great but it was kind of fun using these loose watercolor washes and just using these pretty pastel colors and then also the friend that I was staying with in Texas had this printed pillow and so I thought I would just do some drills on these simple flowers and let me tell you they are not as easy as they appear, and I applaud those of you who do these more graphic sketches because I did not do well with them. I like the yellow one, but I think that's pretty much it for that whole page. The rest of the sketchbook is just swatch pages, um, different things that I was trying to sketch out. So that is going to do it for our video today. Thank you for spending a few moments out of your day to take a look at my artwork. Thanks for requesting this video in the first place and a bigger thank you for spending the past two years with me here on YouTube. It has been such an adventure and I am so glad to be here and to have your support. If you enjoyed this video or would like to see more watercolor content and are not already subscribed, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when new content comes out. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite piece out of the sketchbook was. I would be really curious to know that and I really look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. If you guys want to see more of my artwork throughout the year on a more regular basis, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram at InLiquidColor where I post pretty regularly, at least always in the stories, and then when I have something more exciting to post, I put it in the general feed. And if I ever miss a video here on YouTube, just know that I am probably working on trying to get a new Skillshare class up for you guys. So please be patient with me, but I will see you on Friday, hopefully, for the next Color Spotlight video. I'm looking forward to this one. It's a newer one for me, and uh, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, and happy painting.